Where my mother go? Of course. Uh, thank, I, let me just help y'all out. May is not a good time for me. I, I love Mother's Day, but there's like 18 different birthdays in there that I got to deal with first. I'm exaggerating, but my grandmother was May 4th. My dad's May 5th. My mother's May 9th. And, and, and my grandfather's May 9th. And uh, now Mother's Day. All in a row. And, there, and, and more and more mothers just keep popping up in my family. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Uh, but so uh, I'm going to deal with uh, my wife first since she's here. And uh, I want to wish you a happy, happy Mother's Day. Uh, when you open it, you'll know why I call you the bomb. <laughs> you are the bomb. Where's Adam and Kentuan? Hurry up, quickly. I don't know. Oh, here come Adam and my mother. Everybody's in the room at the same time. Praise the Lord. No, that's not Adam. I thought that was Adam. been out of flower bomb probably about four years so I haven't ha had any because I want to buy new perfume until I sort of get rid of my old perfume so he seen that I was running low amen but this is one of my favorites let's see what's in there uh, yeah, that's it Okay, while you while you here, baby, um, your sons have uh, uh, gifts to give you as well. Here, wait, 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 wait. here. Hmm. <laughs> this don't look like the handwriting. No, that's my handwriting. This is this. Yeah. Okay, you know, because they're not the 5, 10, 15 years old now, amen. I, they got to get their own stuff, hallelujah. Y'all yeah, totally paid No, but this. it's this. This is the oh, guest. What's this? That's, oh, this that's my card, baby. I gave you a card. <laughs> and you guys, let me get, I got a bone to pick with y'all, GBFIC. I tried to recycle my Mother's Day cards. Nobody got the Mother's Day card to recycle them. You'll see them later. Just okay, uh, enjoy. That, that box out there still look full. Amen. Uh, I, am I am very frugal. Amen. Okay. Glory. So, uh, Pastor Adam, I will keep your cards. Uh, see, I keep the cards. All right. I'm just letting y'all know, hint, hint, don't get Pastor Adam no card. Right. Hallelujah. This is from the boys. That's No, that's from Adam. And uh, you see, Kentuan uh -huh, has one. This is from Adam. Come get the picture. Where my, who has my camera? Yeah. Danielle or who? Okay, where Danielle at? Who has the camera? Uh, it's all right. Just take a, mommy, just take the picture, please. I like to read, they know I, I like to read my cards when I get home. I spend time with them. I want to open that card now. <laughs> In, uh, Yeah, it's Mother's Day, yo. Okay. From your son, question. What do you say to a thoughtful and loving mom on Mother's Day? Answer, it's two-part. Who 
don't even roll in it itself. Thanks. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Keep going. And most importantly, uh -oh, open it up. You got it's a puzzle. All right, <laughs> that right there. I love you, Glory. <laughs> That's my. Ass. All right. The one that <laughs> keeps me praying. Hey man, I gotta get prophetic words for that one. Come on, son. This is my son, my old man, so Quintuan back from college. Uh. Oh, I like this. Huh? This is very similar to the other one. <laughs> well, they know your favorite store, so it's kind of easy to uh, shop for you. Somebody help get this paper up for me. I'm making a mess of it. Yes, you are. And I really, name? yes, oh, no, different. different, yeah, it's different. I'm much older. All right, then. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where my cards? What did I do? Uh, uh, <laughs> it still said, it's, yeah. yeah. You're obviously the best mom. Come over here, son, get a picture. Yeah, it does. How else could I have turned out so great? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for everything you do. Now, if that don't sound like Kentuan, nothing does. It does. <laughs> and yesterday, um, because he wasn't here for my birthday, for my 50th birthday, those of you who was there, I gave, I sold 50, a $50 bill to all my children. And I forgot about it, and I went on the shelf, and so I was like, oh, what is this? And I had it had his name on it, and I went to go take it to him. He was half asleep, but he woke up, he opened it, and he, before he been ready, he was like, you're giving, it's supposed to be the other way around. You're giving me money when I should have been giving you money. He was just so cute when he said this made me, my heart go pity patter. Yes. Because y'all know Kentuan is a man of few words or emotions. Amen. So, Amen. Glory. All right, uh, that's a, that's for you. Now this is for my mother. Amen. My Come mother on. And me. Uh, yeah. Well, it says love Adam, but. Yeah, you see, he put my <laughs> name on it. <laughs> uh, that's uh, because, uh, and then. Uh, Thanks for all you do. Doesn't seem big enough for Mother's Day. And it says, thanks for all you do. Give her a moment, too. And a gift certificate. To where? That's DSW. Yeah. Now, if that, you don't use it, you know. <laughs> I can take it back. <laughs> and then I, I did get... Uh, Danielle. Danielle. I... Uh, Somebody get Eddie. Somebody get Eddie. It's not your day, Eddie. And uh, I, you know, I recognize how hard it is to be a single mother. So you got some shoes too. <laughs> No, she's not going to read it out. It was personal. Uh, yeah, that, that was personal, more uh, serious, because I seriously love her, right? This is my, uh, <laughs> I, I only got one daughter. I got all them knucklehead boys, but I only got one daughter. Uh, I just thank God for you. Right. This is to from me to mommy, but I have a disclaimer. My, I was supposed to get the gift card in between church and lunch, <laughs> but... <laughs> But it's a hint in there where the gift card is gonna be from. I was on the same, same tip as everybody else. <laughs> where is it gonna be from? Oh, oh. <laughs> DSW. Now, now, if y'all don't know, this is my daughter. She's really Jewish. Let me tell you what she got in here. <laughs> I threw mine away. 
Because, well, no, I didn't get this one. This is the VIP, $20 off your $49 purchase. So I'm going to get $20. No. I, I should have probably got $100. That's my dog. You got to love that, yeah, boy. I, See? Listen, because... Well, I, this is this a blessing because the one they sent me, because I guess I, they sent me, said I had to spend $100, so I threw it in the garbage can. And I sure did, and so I thank you for this, amen. But, you know, if it would have been $100, then, then, then when I go buy her a gift card, if I spend more than $50, you get a free bag. So I, that's my mother's day gift to myself, <laughs> not to me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all my children. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, a couple more. And hey, give it a microphone. So when she said um, that, um, I ain't say come up at Brother Isaiah, I just sustain. All right, thank you. <laughs> that you can shop. So here's what we did too. So we did, we did recycle. This is one of the recycle cards. This is the re oh okay, to remind I'm like, oh that's so beautiful. There's a reason Mother Day is always on a Sunday, to remind us that we wouldn't have a prayer without moms. Love you, mom. You guys should have said. Listen, this came. It, it, she, this came from the Harris family. That y'all can at least scratch out the name and put the tit <laughs> and put Titus too. <laughs> It, it, it's the thought that counts, amen. Well, here's the <laughs> and thing. And the love that was inside the, the card. Here's the thing. They can do the card, but we do the $100, the Titus too. So when she wants a $100 pair of shoes, she can go right ahead and get them. Oh, no, I'm going to get a facial, amen. I'm going to get she a facial. She already got her this. shoe money, clearly. I got shoe money, <laughs> amen. Y'all know I like to get pampered. I'm going to, this, I already know where I'm going at. Hallelujah. Thank you. May your ministry receive back a 100-fold return, amen. Okay. All right. This. Okay. You. You. I, I clearly. I had clearly. Um. Told Pastor. I, I did try to say. Okay. So I could get to the word. I said everybody else bring their stuff up. I should have known that was gonna happen. At the end of the service. Once Pastor Adam opened up the floodgates. Mom, you have so much to be proud of. Your wisdom. Your strength. Your beautiful spirit. You have so much to celebrate things you accomplished, wonderful members, and most of all, a family who feels blessed by your love. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Lachelle and Gabriel. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, I, ain't get laid, I ain't get laid hands on. I'm trying to figure out what I got to do. I uh, hold on. That was for Now Gabriel. I feel better. <laughs> See, I'll be recycling. Listen, if you ever need any boxes, papers, any of that, just call me. Call me. Amen. Call me. Oh, you know, I, I look. Okay, I'm going to have to hide this in my room. I don't know if I should pull it out. The Black Stop Boys in the room. I These are really love my 100 you. calorie popcorn. Amen. I and Pastor, no, don't be trying really to sing. Want you. Because the last bag <laughs> that she gave me, I had it on the kitchen table, and I noticed that it was dwindling away. And Pastor Adam and AJ were the corporates. Amen. So this helps me stay on my 100. I'm still going to do my, my, my 1,200 calorie um, fast, my 1,200 calorie fast. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I hope that some of you see that um, there are those in this congregation. I used to have a lady that knew that I like Snicker bars because I'm not a person, um, I, when I pray, I ask God that people give me things I need. It's not so much the value of it or what have you, but I really, from the smallest thing to the big thing, I've always prayed that God would give me things that I need. And so I thank God 
for this. I'm glad I get the 100 calorie popcorn now because I can't afford to eat them 200 calories on that snicker right now. Back then, I was a little skinny something. Amen. What you have? Go ahead. Bring it up. What is it? What's read it? If you're who's giving it? Okay, don't be shy. You want me to go up? Oh. <laughs> I don't like to do stuff over me, y'all. <laughs> so this is for Prophetess. Um, I love her greatly. It's just, um, this is just a blessing to declutter the house and to house clean for her whenever she needs to. Amen. I do not like to stand in front of people. <laughs> I love you greatly, Mom. Amen. Amen. How many hours I get? <laughs> okay, you may be blessed back as much. Okay, free decoloring, decluttering and house cleaning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will be taking you up on this offer immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately. Okay, and Evangelist Smith is a part of that. Amen. I see Sister Amanda is a part of that too. Amen. They are ready. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. <laughs> I stole Danielle's word. I think she calls you Mommy. <laughs> I just borrowed it for today. I'll give it back. It's Mommy, Mama, and Mom. I know all of them got different sometimes. This is for you. I love you. I was a little taken back because I love buying her Mother's Day cards. And when she said she wanted to recycle, I think I was a little upset, but I didn't get you a card this year. Well, no, because you have cards in there. Okay. Some of those, listen, this is the reason why those cards I have saved from day one of this ministry. Okay. So you guys can recycle those cards. You can go in there. And I haven't looked at them probably in the last, I haven't looked at them since you gave them to me the first time. 80 in your rocking chair. You're going to look at all those. What about your birthday? Is, is I want to go do it for this year because I'm 50. Thank you. When one, and I, it's time for me to start my coupon shopping. Those of you know I'm a coupon shopper. So CVS and Walgreens are one of my favorite places. Thank you. Amen. Glory. And my uh, sister ran out, but I did have a little... Uh, Mother's Day love for her. She probably she had to go change her pamper. Oh well, Lord have mercy, changing pampers. This was uh, her first Mother's Day, so I wanted to. Uh, so I I put twenty dollars in her account just to say I love you. And so it, she will she won't know it because well she'll hear it because it's in the in the in the bathroom. That's what you call enhanced technology. Amen. So uh, I, I took, I think we took care of everybody. Amen. Let's just keep moving. And Dante. Dante, uh, you have none. <laughs> you st just give it to her, Daddy. It's, it's, it's not, yeah. Uh, that's right. If, if y'all go to the movies, she's paying for herself. You got to pay for yourself. <laughs> Amen. Uh, get an offer in your hand. I, uh, uh, Get an offering in your hand, praise the Lord. I have one today. I love when I have an offering in my hand. I already made out. You know, uh, I come prayed up with what God, what I'm going to give to the Lord before I even get here. Most of the time I have it laid out before I uh, leave the house in the morning. I, and I, I venture to tell you that I know your tithes is your reasonable service and it, it keeps the hedge of protection of God 
or on you. But when you sow an offering, name your seed. Put a mission on that seed and see God move in it. You got an offering in your hand, just, and when you're ready, fill it out, do it online, show, show, show them how to do it for anybody that may be new, watching on the web or whatever, um, how are we going to do it? We need to uh, continue. Make sure y'all get the app. I know we don't talk about it anymore because we think we've saturated everybody in here, but Glory Bible Fellowship has an app. It's a good tool for you to use uh, to stay connected. Because we send out messages through the app, uh, we will uh, uh, we have a newsletter that will be not only a uh, hard copy, but will be in the app. All right, uh, all this stuff is coming, but we 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 want to wait a little bit till everybody adopts the app so that we can uh, get it out to you. Notification, all the events you can find listed in the app. It is a blessing, so we want everybody to get it. Amen. And uh, if you need instructions, they're on the. Uh, screens hallelujah and then of course if you don't want the app but you or you, you just want to give by text you could do that text gb and seven seven and uh it'll then take you right to the link on how to give uh to the church amen but we should today we should it, you don't sow a seed without putting a mission on it uh i see too much seed sowing and, and let me just say if you just keep throwing seed everywhere without a mission on it, what are you what are you sowing? You just you just make you just sow, you know you you might be needing corn, but you sowing watermelon seed. So you need to put a seed a mission on your seed. I when I sow a seed, it, I say hey, this is where it's going. My glory offering today is going towards uh. Uh, that miracle of that new van or that miracle of that uh, uh, new transportation that we plan on having out here. <laughs> I don't get an amen. I got an amen from one back there. Praise the Lord. And so we just believe in God for uh, the miracles. Amen. So put a mission on your seed. Uh, how many people know that it, you, you can't you can't plant a, a apple seed and expect the orange to grow? So you need to put put a put a name on it. Uh, you see, there's a song, uh, and this is what y'all need to find. Uh, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing with my name on it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, well, y'all, y'all gonna help. Y'all gonna have me singing. Now. I don't. They want me. To, I keep telling them that, uh, if I join the praise team, I'm gonna overpower y'all, so y'all can't have me. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't want Monica to get jealous. So, uh, 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 Monica said, "You taking too much of my husband's time." You know. You know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Days are married now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, proud now. Providence said, uh, "I already doing too much, so uh, I could I could do that for the Lord, but I had to drop something. I like to do too much stuff, so I'm a I'm a join you. Y'all just tell me when I'm I'm there. No, uh, the Providence, like, we waiting on you. We uh, thank you. I, I I received the invitation. There's no practice tomorrow. See, about dad, talk, my dad talk about tomorrow." I'm going to be here by myself singing. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle, for the encouragement. <laughs> uh, see, uh, my elephant ears can hear everything. <laughs> so you got an offering in your hand, stand up. If you got an offering in your hand, stand up. And uh, we uh, get the financial 
uh, decree up. And so you can we'll read it together and just tell God that this is blessed in my hand. Just say, it, I'm, this is blessed in my hand. And when I release it, I release miracles back into my life. Okay, now let's read this together. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I love Pat. Well, she was right on it. Come on, th- put, the, put it on the screen. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that I have wisdom to manage my finances. I am a good steward over the finances that God has given me. God is prospering me financially and spiritually, and I have no lack. Because I'm a tithe payer, the windows of heaven are open to me, and I'm blessed more than I have room for. Because I am a sower, my finances are reaping abundantly and are multiplied 100 times fold. God is assigning his angels to work on my finances so that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. The Lord is prospering me in whatever I do. I have, I have, I have supernatural favor with God and man. I am walking in my authority as a believer. Therefore, through faith, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. And when I borrow, I pay it back. I am the employer. I sign the checks. I give the hours. I make the decisions. I make the hard, the hard choices. And I'm not the employee. And if I'm an employee right now, that's just teaching me how to be the employer. Thank you, Lord, for Woody Inventions. Thank you, Lord, for creative new businesses. Thank you, Lord, for making me financially independent. And I promise to bless you with the blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, right before the amen. word, we're going to have to come forward. Sister Jessica, um, did you want to elaborate on this song when you heard um, you can get the microphone? She wanted to especially present this song to the single women, single mothers. This song has been special to me for a very long time. Um, and it's called We Dance, and it, it talks about the, not just the walk that we have with the Lord, but as women, we also, when we truly embrace the relationship that we have with him, we begin to dance. And we stop looking at the things around us, and we trust him to lead, and we will follow. And so um, when I was going through my songs and just asking the Lord to, you know, prick my heart when I had come to the right one, this, I was just overwhelmed by this one in a new way and specifically for the single mothers because being a mother, I can't speak from experience, but what I've observed is that you don't always, and it's like in dancing, you, you might miss a step every once in a while. You might, somebody might step on your toes, you know, you, you may bump into something, but if you cherish the experience of the dance with the Lord, He'll keep all of those things, and he'll help you to, to fully embrace that process. And so um, just specifically for the single mothers, because I know that that, um, 
that must be a more challenging dance at times. But we still serve a God who is the perfect dance partner. Amen. And he's never going to leave us or forsake us. He is our strength and our weakness in, in whatever area that might be. And he always has a, a solution for any um, misstep or when you stub your toe. Amen. So this is for all the mothers, but specifically for the single mothers. Ransom me. 
twice the load Not alone, I've found my home here in your arms It's nice to know, not alone I've found my home here in your arms Amen, hallelujah. Come on, we can just stand to our feet, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for every mother under the sound of my voice and every mother that has watched over the well, and every mother that is to be in the name of Jesus, Father. For we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you for what you would do in this place and do in our hearts, Father. We thank you that you will take us to new dimensions in who you are, Father, and that you will give us the blueprint through your word. In the master strong name of Yeshua, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So everybody be seated except the mothers. Everyone, you can be seated except the mothers. All mothers still stay standing. Mothers still stay standing. Hallelujah. And those of you that are not mothers or the fathers that are in the room, let's put our hands together for these wonderful, powerful women of God. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do that. We can do better than that. Glory, 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 glory. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, and I thank you. Amen. It has been a pleasure for those who have been here all 13 years and those who maybe only been here even down to less than a year to be able to be a mother of Zion in this house to the women of God that are in this house. I thank all of you for your love that you have shown me and my family, and I thank even when you don't know it, the times that I have gleaned something from you as being mothers. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Well, um, I'm just still full, amen, because uh, we kicked off this, we kicked it off this morning, amen. We gave out some wonderful prizes, and I always love to, to give. And so as I, this is my first, for those of you who are maybe watching or even here, first time visitors, this is my first time doing a, the Mother's Day celebration service, okay? Because for, I've always did the Father's Day celebration. And I enjoyed that because I came up with all these wonderful things that I will be able to do and the women will help me. And so we had this, this camaraderie going back and forth, this competition thing. But I want you all to know that y'all hear that Pastor Adam, you know, gave it up to us over the radio. He said it over the air. Amen. He sure did in reference to how what a fabulous job we have done over the last 12 years. So as, I, as, as, as a mother and one as uh, being a young woman that was raised um, by, my, by my grandmother and both my mother and my grandmother's in heaven, amen. And I thank God for both of those women. And when I read the Bible and personally prophecy that uh, when Timothy said to your, your mother Lois, my mother name was Lois, and a woman of faith, I always um, give that prophetic word over to my daughter, um, Danielle. And so as I was looking um, and saying there's so many mothers in the Bible, so I'm going to have a good time over the next 50 years with these mothers in the Bible, so I'm not going to run short. Hallelujah. I wanted to deal with today, which was very fitting for the time that we're in, and it is the woman, at the Zarephath widow. Amen. And I chose her for a particular reason, um, not only because the story that we're going to go and look at over in the book of 2 Kings chapter 17, if I want to lay that foundation, but I think it's so fitting that we all can relate to her whether we are married or whether we're single, because at some point we'll be able to glean from her. It says, the widow of Zarephath struggled, as many mothers do today, with putting food on the table, whether a single mom or in a family facing economic hardship. Many moms are worried about having enough food, getting clothing on the children, and providing for their family. The woman of Zarephath was asked by God to give what little she had to someone else, something we probably don't consider believing that we need to conserve and ration what little we have. If you're a mother, 
Um, I'm quite sure in my household, my children can understand. I, I was very good at rationing out and, and cutting. I don't care if I had one candy bar, I'm just going to cut it up into three pieces. Amen. So I, I, I can relate to that, although I wasn't a, 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 single, a single mom. Amen. And so you may be thinking about give your food to someone else, ludicrous, but not in God's eyes. It's in the giving that we receive in the trusting that provision transpire. As, as, as mothers and even as women of God, we're going to have to learn how to trust and believe in God when it comes to our provision. Amen? So when we trust God as our provider, we have to understand that if all you can spare is a single can of corn, then give it. Amen? As a mother, you're going to have to learn how to give. Hallelujah. And so when I was looking at that and, and my title of my message, I want us to go over to second, I want us to go over to second Samuel um, chapter 20, second Samuel chapter 24. And I want us to start, I'm going to start, I'm reading from the NLT verse 18, because I want to lay a foundation um, here so that we can see something. And I'm, we're going to look here and I'm start at verse, hmm. Let's start at, I'm going to start at verse 18 so you can get the full picture. Amen. This is a time when David uh, was making amends for the error he made. Amen. So some of you men will be able to, to get in on this. Hallelujah. And it says, that day, that day, Gad came to David and said to him, go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aranah, the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him when Aronah saw that king and his men coming towards him, he came and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Why have you come, my lord, the king? Aronah asked. David replied, I have come to buy your threshing floor and to build an altar to the Lord there so that he will stop the plague. Amen. How about you know when you got some things going in your life, amen, you're going to have to get the answer from the Lord. So here it is. There was a plague that had took place and the king now was coming because he wanted, he seen some land that he wanted to purchase. But get this, that it, my Lord, the king, and use, use it as you wish. Aranah said to David, here are oxen for the burnt offerings, and you can use the threshing boards and ox, and ox yokes for wood to build a fire on the altar. I will give it all to you, your majesty, and may the Lord your God accept your sacrifice. But the king replied to Aranah, no, I insist on buying it, for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. <sighs> Look at your neighbor, mother. See, if you're going to be a mother, it's going to cost you something. Look at your neighbor and say, look at, your, look at the other mother, the other woman on the side to you and say, and even the mothers that's, that's waiting to be in the room, if you're going to make your mind up to be a mother, it's going to cost you something. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. And, and so David paid him 50 pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. And David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord answered his prayer for the land and the plague on Israel was stopped. Ha, ha, let me tell you this. If you, if you make up your mind, hallelujah, that you're going to be a mother. And if you are a mother, what are you, what are you had a planned pregnancy or unplanned pregnancy? Hallelujah. You had made some sacrifices. You made some sacrifices. And those of you that are waiting to be new mothers, um, count the cost. Count the cost. Hallelujah. Count the cost. There will be some sacrifices. We're in a, in a, in a day and age, amen. Um, you can't wait till the, till the child get here and then we'll call them baby kids. You got to count the cost that looking at somebody else, baby, that's, that's gone, that look like they're so cute, they're so pretty, they don't have no issue. You don't know if your kid going to act like that. Hallelujah. You just may have to be the mother that say, God brought me to it, so he going to bring me through.
through it. Hallelujah. Because you may not know what is the call on that child's life. See, what we have to understand that there is a, a destiny that's attached to every child that God brings forth into the world. Hallelujah. So let, maybe let, let me help you out. Our future mother, mothers to be, amen. We, you know, somebody probably will have told me this. Um, um, are you you expecting? Yes, I'm getting ready to bring destiny to the earth. Are you having a boy or a girl? I'm getting ready to birth in destiny. Doesn't matter where it's a boy. Doesn't matter whether it's a girl. I'm bringing forth destiny. God has given me an assignment to bring forth destiny. God has given me an assignment to bring forth legacy to leave it within the earth. When God created Abraham, when he came to Abraham, he says, I'm looking for a man. Hear me, women. Hallelujah. You're looking for a man. You, we are needing fathers. Amen. God says, I'm looking for a man that will teach his children. Teach his children. Uh, I know some of us, we are right now, I'm down the lane. Some of us, we know we just got to repent because we, we didn't get that. We didn't get that. So just say, ouch, and say, Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, God has been given. Say, no regrets. No regrets. Remember, I said, there are no perfect mothers. There are no perfect mothers, but God Hallelujah has the blueprint to make you better. Hallelujah. I'm quite sure if I was the um, ex Danielle, Danielle, she probably can tell you some, tell you some stories or what have you. But I guarantee you right now, I, she can tell you that she got a good mother. Hallelujah. Uh, let, let me help some of y'all get delivered right here, right now. Take the good from your mother and leave the bad. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't understand all those mother issues. I, 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 I don't. Because if I were to lay out my story or what have I would have every reason um, to be able to walk around resentment, unforgiveness. But my mother did not have the tools that I have. Amen? So we can't. Here's what we do in society because we're, we're looking at society. And it's for everybody in the room. There's the mama, boys, baby, girls, and all of that. Amen. We cannot expect individuals to give us something they do not have. I'm going to say that again. We cannot expect our mothers and our fathers to give us something they do not have. But what they do have, let me take that. Hallelujah. I'm getting a head full of myself. Because and God has given women have the ability. I'm getting ready to get to my text. We're going to go over there. Um, to take little and make it into a lot. I, I want to title my message. I think I should. I got two part messages. Amen. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to be in a mother going to cost you something. But then on the other hand, hallelujah, we get ready to look at the text. Um, God has given you a handful of purpose. <laughs> hallelujah. Go with me. Over to 2 Kings, chapter 17. Ah. Did I say 17? Wait a minute. in a wrong text. I'm trying to kick y'all off, take, take y'all elsewhere. <laughs> it's first key. I told y'all I'm getting it. The widow of Zarephath. I'm reading from the NLT. Amen. So the first thing, women, is that even if you didn't know it, say, you know what? Me become a mother, it cost me something. It cost me something. Uh, children, let, let, let me help your parents out right here. Because you, you may not have understand that, especially if you are a male child, 
Um, you, 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 you would never know what it is to carry a, almost something the size of a watermelon in your stomach and then bring it out through the birth canals of what's between your legs. Hear me, young men back there in the back. AJ and all you guys right there. Fo focus, focus. Because y'all the main one want a woman. Hallelujah. See, the mother of Zion is speaking right now. Hallelujah. So you would never, you know, men want what's between the woman's leg, but when they, they, you'll never understand what it's like as a male child when a woman has to birth a child into the earth. And that's why you will hear, hear your, how many of y'all have heard your, mom, your mama say, I brought you into this world, maybe that's just my grandma, and I'll take you out. I know that ain't right. But see, what they don't understand is that when you was, you was the one carrying that for nine months, you, some of y'all was in, in labor probably for two, some people have been in labor two days and three days, and then all of a sudden you want to act like I'm not your mama? I, I'm, I'm just going to give y'all some Miss Dot, like she would tell her sons, boy, I will knock your teeth out your mouth. I was the one that stayed. See, whether daddy's there or not, mama's going to always be there. I was the one that stayed up in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. I was the one that was up praying when you was not feeling well. It was mama. Hallelujah. My husband right now, the children can be, Pastor Adam can roll over and be out like a light. I'm still up waiting for the, I can hear the, I can wake up in the middle of the night and hear the garage door go up and I can say such and such in the house. He don't know nothing. He don't know who came in the house, who came out of the house. And I be over there I'm like, what is, I'm like, God, will you please give him some of what I got? But he, but that's because as a mother, you have learned how at this, any little sound that you hear, you hear, you're able to wake up. And some of us don't lose that. I know I didn't never, I didn't never lose that. Amen. So, so, so children, give your mothers a little slack. Amen. Especially y'all that's under the age of 18 and under. Hallelujah. Get them a little, get them a little, give, give your mothers and, you know, a little, a little slack. You know, don't, okay. Because you, you don't understand that process. But when you get married, amen, then you're going to be able to understand. By and by, amen. Because while she getting, while she getting swole, then the, the daddy, you, you get swole too because you eating everything that she eating at the same, t at the same time. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So just be a good child. Then you won't have you won't have to you won't have to have any of that any of that amen glory be to God are we there in verse first Kings chapter seventeen verse eight now where my little daughter's at oh gosh yeah she being a mother I'm gonna have to listen that was a good message that like, if your mama didn't tell you. Amen. Over at the Shockless. Hallelujah. So then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon, and I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour. Circle that right there. And that's what you want to put in a handful of purpose. Because y'all know that purpose flour. So y'all probably thought I didn't know that because I don't cook. Amen. See there? I know a little something. I know a little something. So listen, mothers, God has given you purpose. Amen. Outside, you are purpose to be, you are a, be a, oh, thank you. Be a mother of purpose. I didn't say be purpose to be a mother.
mother. Be, if you are a mother, be a mother that has purpose. Amen. Many times we overlook that to get to the one that's in the pulpit or the one that's doing this and doing that. Amen. You make sure that you do your, that you are purpose about being the mother that God has called you to be. Sometimes, amen, that may be your ministry. Hallelujah. Um, as, as you heard Mother Bowman speaking, she raised 12, 12 children, and they all pretty much, you know, went in. Her, she was never in a pulpit, but she had the, the most important job that her prayers launched them there. Hallelujah. So here it is. She says, a handful of flour left in a jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug, and I was just gathering a few sticks to cook. This last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, verse 13, said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and oil left in the containers just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. You're going to have the mothers, amen, that when you go to the Lord, you're going to have to do exactly what God said do. You're not going to, you, you can't look at your circumstances as you hear the prophet say, he, he says, don't be afraid. And, and as God says, the one reason why he, he liked it, Sarah of Abraham's wife, is said because she was a woman that did not have fear. Hallelujah. She was a woman that did not have fear. Um, and as we as mothers, sometimes with us having children, um, we got to make sure that because we don't read about, about Job, but here's Job was a man. Most people don't understand the reason why the door opened over to Job for him to get put in the situation he was, was because Job had opened up the door to fear. And it allowed the enemy to be able to come in. And I know sometimes it's difficult. I'm talking about my mother. I got four boys. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so sometimes, amen, you, you got to be caught. You want to make sure that they're with the right people. They're in the right place. And then especially in the timing that we're in today where so many of our African-American boys, I, I get, you know, the police brutality and, and all the injustice and all of that. We're going to still have to trust God. We're going to still have to believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Young black men and, 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 and black boys, you're going to have to listen to your mama. And if your mama's not in a position, amen, then listen to your grandmama. Listen to your auntie. Listen, amen, so that you will have the Lord God on your side. Hallelujah. So number two is, amen, after you know that it's going to cost, it's cost you something to be a mother and that you're going to make some sacrifices. So you say, okay, I'm still in there, prophets, I'm still in there. Now God is saying, listen, don't walk with any fear. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Because if you trust and lean, and lean on me, I'm going to bring you through this. Remember I said there is no blueprint for motherhood. There's not any. Hallelujah. I don't care how many books you read or what have you. There's no blueprint. But what God does give us is him. And even as we see in the, the Zarephath woman, um, and, and he told, he said, go and do exactly as I have stated. See, I can't, um, and, and, and the, the Bible said, train up a child the way they should go, and they shall not depart from it. That word, train me, train up a child according to its bent. Okay, I cannot, how I may do something with Daniel is not the same way I did it with Adam the second. And the same way I would have to do the training with Quintuan or Kennard. Because I got trained, they're, they're, they're different. Remember, they each come with a different destiny. And sometimes as mothers, we have to be cautious not to try to lump all our children in in the same batch. Okay. We got to be able to do that. Um, one of my, I can, some of one of them I can just speak to, and they're going to get it on the first go. But then I may got that one that I got. If I say I'm going to spank you, I got to make good on it, because if I don't, 
that they gonna keep on they do it. They gonna have you figured out. Amen. I knew which one of the ones that I can say assumed a position. I would tell the boys I already, and you gotta have that. You you gotta create discipline. My boys knew from the how what, what your age was according depending on what it, what your age was just for normal things. I took all the guesswork out of it. You know, if you get out of line, you're going to get that many licks according to what your age was. Just assume the position. Amen. That one thing I did not tolerate that I would, did not tolerate is when I went and scriptures and all of that, I put that in place is if you stole or if you was lying. Now, lying I cannot deal with. Lying caused the prophet to just raise up and leave mama at the, leave mama at the back door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lying I can't do. Hallelujah. Because my grandma told me if you lie, you'll steal, and if you steal, you'll kill. Hallelujah. So we had to discipline that. So you got to know, assume I would tell one of them, I can say, we're going to go ahead. They go ahead and get their licks. What happened? Then you got that one that want to squiggle and move and all of that. And so I learned that you can't discipline your children when you're angry. So then, okay, I'm just going to take my time. I make sure that when I get ready to do my discipline, amen, well, I got, if you got an hour, I got an hour too. Amen. But you're going to get this, you're going to get this behind whooping. Hallelujah. What? Because the Bible says, what he says, he, now one phrase says, beat them and they shall not die. That's what the Bible says. Now I'm not talking about being abusive. This generation is because we have allowed the government and everything to come in. And I never forget the story that my grandmother um, told me. My uncle Ricky, he was and he was always into something. So she had discipline this particular day, and he said, "I'm gonna call the police," and he did. And the police officer came to the door. Knock, 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 Miss Chambers. She was like, "Yes." She said, "Yeah, I understand. You're, you're just." And she says, "Listen here, Mr. Police." She says, "I will whoop him, and he'll live." but you will shoot him and he'll die. He said, thank you very much, ma'am. Have a nice day. That was back in the, back in the, in the 60s. So, because now the government is coming in and, and we got the DFS and all of this here. One, and, and I'm not talking about being abusive. I, my grandmother never beat me with stench and cords and all that. And I know some of you have, may have had parents that did that and did that. That's not right. But what I'm saying is for this generation, we must discipline our children in the proper way and not through frustration. Ask for help if you need help, mothers. Ask for help. And if you know that your parents did it the wrong way, why would you still adapt to use that same model? You don't adapt to use the same model. And then on the other ends of the spectrum, we got these newfangled mothers and parents, you know, just talk to them. You know, just put them in, just put them in time out. I told you, you gotta know your child. Then yell at the age of two, two. Figured out the system in daycare. She would go over there, hit on the children. and put her own self in time out. Now what I was gonna do with that? She figured out the system. I got called from work one day. In the rain, I never forget. She's in a four-year-old class because they upped her because she's three years old. The teacher called me saying, I'm thinking well, what's gonna get there. Danielle has balled up all the children's paperwork and put it in the trash at three. And I said, Danielle, why did you do that? Because it was taking too long to finish. <laughs> the teacher said, I can't put up another grade. I don't, I'm afraid to put a three-year-old in the class with the five-year-olds. Amen. <laughs> we already seen those, those patterns there, you, your, 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 those patterns. So I couldn't come up with different Things. And so what I did to keep her mind, I had to put in an enrichment course. When I moved to Kansas City, I got them to put her up in the extra grade. I put her in enrichment courses of that. AJ, his vent was, I had to put him in. From the time he, he was crawling at six months, 
And he was crawling the stairs. I couldn't leave him alone because he knew how to get on. We would try to crawl over. He came out running. Okay? So that's why it was easy for us to put him that God showed us to what? Put him in there in the running. That's why he did track. You have to hear from God in reference to your children. You have to take them to the Lord and pray for them. Now, I'm just going to take a buddy trip and throw this one out here for myself. I may miss uh, some of y'all. Don't, don't throw, it, throw no rocks at me. But y'all that did not have children, give your children some good names. Okay? Give them some good names. Matter of fact, they talked about this in under with the racial healing that we was in, in the class that says that how some resumes, because of the names, they can tell the African American that never make it and get your phone call. Because you want to name your child Kukunikwa, Kuka, Babak, Shaka, or what have you. I'm just being for real in the society that we live in. That you they might get a chance to get a call back, get, get, get the application before somebody. Unless you are a praying mother. Amen? Glory be to God. I'm so thankful for Pastor Adam because I was getting ready to name Danielle Erishika. That was, and I had a good purpose. It was, I was going to be a science major, and that was a name that I like. It was this flower that was in a book that was called Erishika. And something, y'all, my white folks, y'all, here, but we got, black folks got this thing, the longer the name, that we thought the better it was. And so Erishika had, was so long, I said, ooh, yeah. That's the name I want to name my daughter. I'm in college, I don't have a baby yet. And Pastor, I gave that name to him. He said, no. He said, we're going to name her Danielle. And I praise God for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Because what? God has given because you. Because I am clutch. <laughs> God has given you purpose. Amen. Purpose. In the book of Psalms, it said that the children are to be used in the hand of the Lord as arrows. Where you fire them into the direction that they should go. You shoot them in the direction that they should go. What is the purpose? You, you, you're, you're responsible for that. And so here it is. Um, that she listened to the Lord because we get ready to come up on verse 17. Because sometimes as a mother, you're going to be faced with some dead situations. Verse 17 says, sometime later, this woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, and finally he died. Then she said to Elijah, oh man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to the point out my sin and kill my son? But Elijah replied, Give me your son. How about God is saying, give me your children. Give me your children. Don't give your children to the world. Don't give your children over to the TV. Don't give your children over to the video game. Don't give your children over to society. Give me your children. Says the Lord God Almighty. And he took the child's body from her arms, carried him up the stairs to the room where he was staying, and laid the body on his bed. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord, and the, oh Lord my God, why have you brought tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me, causing her son to die? Sometimes as, as mothers, we, got, we get in situations that maybe our children or our, our spouses, and we cry out to God one, and say, God, why have you done this? But we learned something even from the prophet Elijah. He was say, not that he did not believe God. See, God can, God can understand women, our emotions. You can talk to him and he'll understand. And he stretched out over the child three times and cried out to the Lord. See, that's perfectly one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Ghost. And the Lord, my God, please let this child life return to him. That is the most powerful prayer, women, that we can come before God and pray for our children and our family members. If you're going to be a mother, listen, let, let me say this. If you're going to be a mother, she did it a she did it a 
If you're going to be a mother in today's society, you're going to have to be a praying mother. And I mean this in all my heart. Or don't have any children. Don't have any children. You hear me, young men? You find the right woman. And if she don't look like she's quality material to be a mother, then you keep your, your wee-wee in your pants. Amen. Listen, I'm not one. Let, let me help you because here's what some parents do. I want grandchildren. I want grandchildren. No, I don't want no grandchildren. My children are not going to take care of them. Take that precious that pressure off of them. I don't care if Eddie is the only one that I have because I ain't taking care of Eddie. Eddie, mama going to take care of her. Eddie gets to come visit. I don't take care of Eddie. That's not my responsibility. Grandmother, that's not your responsibility. Stop doing it. That's the reason why some of them keep having one after the other because some mothers have it twisted that you always run it in to help them, run it in to help them. That's what my daughter told me. That came out of her mouth, the reason why. She says, because you made it how you did not help me out. None. Why? Because I was a different type mother. I was raised by my grandmother, but I made up my mind that I was not going to have another generation that my grandmother was going to raise my child or my mother. I made that decision on my own, living in the Pumpkin and Bean Prize of Miami, Florida, and I, at six months pregnant, my mother and my grandma say, you ain't going nowhere. I said, I'm going to show y'all better than I tell you. I moved out, and I was six months pregnant. Slept on the floor the first night. But that was mine. That was mine. I was breaking. I didn't know I did, but I was breaking generational curses that making it better for the next generation that my daughter will have it even better than I did and I I enjoyed the process I didn't need I didn't want the help hallelujah but even though the help was there it's not my grandmother for parenting me but that was not her responsibility to raise my child it was not her responsibility to take care of my child even though we wasn't married that was his responsibility and i put that back on him hallelujah i'm speaking as a big mama right now i'm real tough on women because if we keep our legs closed can't a man get nothing that's how powerful you are we won't have Ahabs. Cannot have an Ahab unless can't have a Jezebel unless there's an Ahab. We need to require strong men. Stop trying to get a man and fix him up with a struggle. Let him do the work. I can speak this way because I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was came out of family of divorce, but I still made it. I still made it because of the mother figures that I had around me. That I seen them being able to make it. Hallelujah. You got to want mothers. You got to want more for yourself more than somebody else wants you to have more for yourself. That's for, it. That's for the children, the men in the room too. Mothers, we want the best for our children. But what children don't understand is, you got to want to want the best for you too. We got to want to have the best for you. And at Glory Bible Fellowship International Church, the family-friendly church, father and mother, I love you. If you don't have a father and mother, stand up, Pastor Adam. That's why God has given you a spiritual father and mother. There is no excuse for you to live below the standard that God has called you to be the man and woman of God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a new paradigm shift. The reason the church needs to get back to its perspective. The church is supposed to have the ones that are broken. The church is supposed to have the homeless. The church is supposed to have the orphans and the widows because it will be a model of those who are lacking in any of those errors will find family in the 
community. You are not an orphan. You're not an orphan. You're not a widow. You're not fatherless. Look around you. Look at the fathers in the room, young men. Look at the mothers in the room. Young women, old women. We lack nothing. That if we will be like the Zarephath woman, to learn to follow the instructions and to call out to God, even as the prophet did, and the Lord, and the Lord heard Elijah's prayer. God hears your prayer, women. He not listen to your gossip. He not listening to your backbiting. He's not listening to your complaining. He wants to hear your prayer. Even if you think it's dead, God says, I can raise it. He wants you to bring the dead things to him. Bring the dead husband. Bring the dead daughter. Bring the dead sisters. Bring the dead. Bring it dead. And God says, I, I breathed on it and raise it up. And the Lord heard Elijah's prayer, and the life of the child returned, and he revived. Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room. See, there it is. Mothers, you're going to have to have an upper room experience if you're going to have children. If you can't have an upper room experience, uh, I told you it's going to cost you something, then stay out of the mother game. Say, we want to join. Listen, let me change this. The mother gang. You want the, the most powerful gang there is is the mother gang. Fierceless. Don't you hear those women that they, they something happened to their child, they can lift up um, seven tons cars and lift up the up because of the drilling that runs through their body. Amen. That's not because they was a man. It's because there is a connection that when it comes as being a mother, that the power and the love of child that God gives us. Yes, he calls you the weaker vessel, but that's not because he finds you weak. Don't be a weak woman. Don't be a weak mother. Call out to the Lord. Call out to the Lord. Call out to the Lord. And then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Look, he said, your son is alive. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know what you, mother, I don't know what you got dead. But I can tell you that if you call out to the Lord, it's a lie. Hallelujah. So then the woman told Elijah, now I know for sure that you are a man of God and that the Lord truly speaks through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to cost you something. Hallelujah. But say it's worth the sacrifice. The children are worth the sacrifice. The husband is worth the sacrifice because God built you for it. <laughs> he built you for it, mothers. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Did you guys find my, my, my song that I wanted? It's the one that's showing on the screen. She got on black and white with buttons and stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I know we, we, and this is so fitting because the Lord gave me this here song, hallelujah. We ain't getting ready to have no sad, drawn out day or what have you. We, we, we getting ready to do a little shout to come on out of here as much. Especially y'all, y'all looking real good with this, this hat. Did y'all find it? It's Vicky Winans. She's standing up. She's ministering. She got this white on. Hallelujah. And, and, and this is what I want to say to you. And this is what God said to me to, to, to close this out and say to you mothers. As long as you got King Jesus... You don't need nobody. I'm going to say that one more time. Are we ready? We, what's, what's on the screen? Uh, look, find you another label. Prophesy to somebody. Say, as long as you got King Jesus, you don't need nobody else. Come 
on, come on, prophesy. Yeah, what's what me and y'all, I got it to everybody in the room. Hallelujah. As long as you got King Jesus. As long as you call on King Jesus. Hallelujah. Let, it, listen, let me get my mothers up to the, get the mothers come on up to the aisle. Come on. Turn that up. Turn that up. Hallelujah. Especially y'all got these hats on. Come on up. Come on up. Y'all looking real good. Y'all going to fit in real good with this. Go ahead and start that. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Anybody in the house just feel like just giving God a little glory, just make your way down from me. Going to sing this song, this old time church song. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me some young people down here. Come, come on, on, come, come on, come on. Come on, Earth, and dance and get the dance yourself. Come on, Tracy. Y'all come on down here. Come on, Brother Willie P. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody who so who you going to call on? now? King Everybody Jesus. Everybody who feel like they need to come, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah, how many here been lied on before? You need to be down there. How many been cheated before? You come need on. to be down How many been talked about? I know you've been talked about. How many been mistreated? How many been filled with that's up? How many been scarred? Yeah. Talked about so in the water. I mean, ah! I want you to know, long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Hallelujah. You Come on, prophesy. Said? Long as I got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. I don't need nobody else. Come on. Come on, we going back old school. See, this is how the mothers are the old.
Jesus. Jesus. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, come on, we we'll think about the goodness. Oh, he done done for me. I just thank. Put your hands together. But as long as we got King Jesus on our side, hallelujah, everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. I want Mother to be able to give us some encouraging word to close us out as Pastor Adam is making his way down. Mother, tell him how old you are. 85. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you made it? By the grace of God. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. You heard that? I have a twin sister, too. She's Amen. still living. And she's still living. Hallelujah. Glory, you got any word, anything you want to share with the mothers and grandmothers in the house as a nugget? Be, be kind to your mother and, and, and your mother and your grandmother. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Pastor Adam. Hallelujah. Thank you, mother. 85 Glory. years old. Amen. And mother hung around with That's us on one, Friday night, too. And still two, was in church three. on Sunday. Hallelujah. That, that, that's your grandmother, right? That's four generations right there. Yes. Five, ooh, for, praise the Lord. Five generations in that family. Woo, my God. But well, let's let's stand as we close. I uh, will pray for the mothers, and then we'll just close out the service. And come on, give God a hand clap of praise for prophetess and all the helpers today. They did an awesome job. And, and I'm I'm impressed. And, and the, the presentation for the mothers in the uh, fellowship hall is a blessing. Uh, there is still leftovers, right? I'm, in, uh, I'm supposed to tell you, take it off. I don't know what that means, but take it off. That means go by, eat again, uh, take a plate home, or eat it in there, or just uh, make sure it don't make it back to my house. Amen. Let us close in this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, Mother's Day, God. God, we thank you for uh, Mama's baby, Daddy's maybe. What does that mean? That means that we know who our mama is. And thank you, Lord, that you have taken care of our mothers. The mothers that have gone to glory, God, take, we know you've taken care of them as well. Lord, this is a day that we celebrate Mama. And God, we couldn't do it without you. Now, God, as you continue to strengthen these mothers as they raise children and grandchildren and they uh, impart spiritual wisdom onto their families, God, give them the intestinal fortitude to, to stand up to what's right and say, thus says the Lord. Give them the, your spirit. Because it's not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. So give them your spirit to be able to stand up against unrighteousness. Give them your spirit to be able to raise their children in the admonition of the Lord. Give them your spirit to charge their children with your words. And now, God, I thank you because 
you are in the child raising business. So we thank you for giving us the wisdom and understanding and helping us to raise these children. Now, God, I thank you for everybody that was here, everybody that was a part of this meeting with you. Yes, we were in service to you today, but we most of all met you here today. So, God, we thank you. We thank you for those uh, that got here early and helped out. We thank you for those uh, that were here yesterday and making the decorations. We thank you, God, for the preached word today. Continue to strengthen us and build us up in your word. Now, God, as we leave here, we leave here knowing that we've been changed, transformed, and knowing that our mother's they had to pay a price to be mothers. They had to not walk in fear, but to trust the Lord and do it in prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we bless you for them. We honor you for them. And now we know that without Mama, none of this would be possible. So now, God, we honor you today by thanking you for our mothers. We honor you today for making ministry possible. We honor you today for the preached word. We honor you today for the songs that were sung. We honor you today for everything that transpired. But most of all, we honor you for you. Because you first loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son so that we would not perish, but have everlasting life. We leave here transformed. We leave here converted. We leave here with a newness of spirit. We unzip our man suit and allow your spirit to enter into us so to become new men and new women in your God likeness formed after righteousness and holiness. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We leave here afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. If your mom is here, tell them you love them. If, she, if your wife's here, give her a hug. <laughs>